Hi, eighth grade. I wanted to provide to you some video instruction for the new equation that we learned in class today. If you were absent and would like to keep up with the class, you can certainly use this video instruction plus the resources that are on Google Classroom to do so. You might find that it's also helpful to do a review of video instruction of how exponents work, how pi works, how a division bar works, and perhaps to review the order of operations. We'll go over some of those as they pertain to calculating intensity of sound in this video. The intensity of a sound wave is the amount of energy the wave carries per second through a unit area. When we say unit area, it's like saying a measurement of length, like meter, and it is multiplied by itself to calculate the area inside that space. Watt is the unit of power that we would measure the sound in, and so we can take intensity and define it as the amount of power that we put inside that squared space. The equation to do so is intensity is equal to power, in this case we're going to be measuring in watt, over, and this is a division bar, the sum of 4 times pi multiplied by the distance from the source squared. There's a couple of things that I want you to remember as you do this for our purposes in science. This part of the equation never changes. However, per your purpose, you might change the type of pi you use. Pi is a ratio. It can be expressed as a fraction, but also as a decimal, and that decimal never ends. In our class, you can simply use 3.1 4 for the pi. For distance from source, I want to remind you of something. This means you are measuring from the actual source making the sound away from it. And because we're in science class, we're going to use the metric system. For example, if my distance from the source is 15 meters and it is squared, that is the same as saying 15 times itself times meter times itself. Two, two, power of two. Now, we're going to do an example of this on our next slide. Those of you who are working from home, you might want to print these because here in the classroom, we used a printed version of the slide as our worksheet and wrote directly on it. We're going to keep this in our applied math section when we're finished and it's been graded. The next slide gives you two different scenarios, this one and this one. We're going to focus on this one, which is shown for us here, but I want to show you a couple of hints. Suppose you want to calculate the intensity of the sound waves from an orchestra playing at a distance of 15 meters from you. When we say suppose, it's kind of like we're imagining we're in that situation and we want to do some math. To match it. An orchestra is going to be playing from a stage and we're going to have rows of seats in the auditorium to listen to this orchestra. The orchestra itself is probably lined up as musicians lined up in kind of this radius type concentric circle format. And then of course the, law, the walls of the auditorium might come out like this. You've probably all been in auditoriums similar to this including here at Skyview. If this orchestra is playing at the loudest they possibly can, in this problem they've been measured to be a power of 76 watts. So now I can use the formula for intensity to calculate what this person sitting right here, which is 15 meters away from the stage, is experiencing. Please think about intensity almost like an experiment. So I've used this as the equation, I have plugged in for power, the power, and of course my 4 times 3.14, or pi, and the distance squared. If I were to calculate this, the next step would look like intensity is equal to 76 watts, which I've done nothing with so far, over 12.56, which is the sum, times the sum of 15 squared. Remember that would be 
the 15 times 15, which is 225, and meter times meter, which is meter squared. Please don't forget about your units of measure. It's perfectly acceptable to use a calculator, and though I can see my end result here, I feel like it might be helpful to show one more step inside of here and to put it with a more traditional division bar. So if I have intensity, and I know that 76 watts is the power, I have my division bar, and I know that I have to multiply these and multiply these. I'm going to multiply these two sums together. And I come up with a product of 2,826 meters squared. I want you to think about this part of this division problem as this. It is the 76 divided by 2,826. And this is actually a very long decimal. I've rounded it. And this part, the watts over the meter squared, is maintained. You see it here has watts over meters squared. Now, this all is related to this problem. We can do this same work for a new problem, and let's do that together. These are steps that help us prepare an answer that has a claim and some evidence, as well as some reasoning. In this case, I want you to think about the reasoning as, if I extend my understanding of this math here, what else could I do with it? So, I'm going to make just a small adjustment so that we have a little bit more working space. And I'm looking at the question it asks me. How can you increase the intensity of sound waves? When I answer this, it's going to be my claim. So it might look like something as you can increase the intensity of sound waves by... And I need to find out what we need to do, and I'm going to use this to establish my evidence. I have to calculate the intensity of the sound waves from a conversation of a crowd of people who are about 10 meters away. The power of the sound is 50 watts. So if I use my equation, I can see that intensity is equal to power over 4 times pi which is multiplied by the distance squared. This is the same as saying 50 watts is over 12.56 multiplied by the square of 10, which I know to be 100. 10 times 10 is 100 meters squared. So that gives me a really nice, beautiful answer of 1,256 meters squared. I'm not finished yet. I now need to divide this denominator into the numerator to further simplify. And I'm going to say that intensity is equal to a really big long decimal. And I'm going to round it so that instead of 0 0.0, 039, I'm going to go to 0 0.04, and this is meters squared, and the watts are maintained, so watts over meters squared. I hope this makes sense to you. This is the intensity, and so I know what that looks like. I'm going to try this evidence. This time, I haven't changed the power, but I have changed the distance. So, I maintain my power up top as 50 watts. I still use this, and now that I've done it a couple times, I know for sure that it's going to be 12.56. And I'm multiplying it by 20 meters squared. Now, 20 times 20 is 400. So, really, when I simplify to this next step, I've got 50 watts over 12.56 times 400, 5,024 meters squared. Apologies for our bell. And now I'm going to just do that division. This is interesting, and I'm actually going to write this out a little bit so that you can be reminded of a rounding up trick that we do. This goes on and on and on. 
and of course meters squared. If I wanted to round it out to be the same as this in the hundredths, and I'm looking at this 9 and this 5, I know that I need that 99 to go to 100. One of the mistakes that 8th graders will make is they'll say, oh, then that means 0 0.001. But what really is happening is I'm taking this 99 and I'm replacing it with a jump up to 100. So really when I round that, it comes out to 0 0.01 meters squared. So these are the two answers, don't forget my power, that I'm comparing. And I know that 0 0.01 is less intense than 0 0.04, because this is like saying four one hundredths, and this is only one one hundredth. And so when I think about this question of how can I increase the intensity of sound, I see that this one is more intense, and the biggest difference is that it is closer. So by being closer, so my claim would be to increase the intensity of wave, sound waves, I need to sit closer to the source of the sound. My evidence for this is that I have calculated two different distances with the same or same power and found that the shorter distance was more intense. When I want to write some reasoning, I can use this as a clue which will have a greater effect on the intensity of a sound, doubling its power or cutting in half its distance. Here's another way that we can use math to defend our thinking. If I have this one and I know it is more intense, I can try some of these tricks. I can double the distance as I have done here, and now I want to see what would happen if I increase the power. So now we're going to double the power. So we're going to take the same equation. We're going to say intensity is equal to double the power, 100 watts, over 12.56 times. We're going to keep that distance the same, squared. So now I have 100 watts over because this would be 100, so it's like 100 times 12.56, and we've got our meters squared, and now I get to divide it. So now I've got um, 100 divided by 1,256, and so now I have an intensity of, ooh, I'm going to do some more rounding, 0 0.08, and this is watts over meters squared, and I can see that by doubling the power, I have made a big increase on the intensity. So, it is an even bigger increase than this increase by having or cutting in half the distance. Okay, so by looking at the three different figures, you can add some kind of a reasoning that states what you notice when you change the distance the um, distances as well as the power. Okay, if you have any other questions about how to do this, I encourage you to re-watch because it always helps to watch two times and send an email or touch base in advisement.